excitement of their strike force when one, like, once again Eden Hazard's got to play yep. uh, through the middle. They sat in, they made it difficult. They lost Rudiger, which was a, which was a blow to them. Uh, and Liverpool had lots of possession, but it, it was all kind of breaking down for them. I think Manny had the best chance probably in the first half that he put wide. Um, and I'm not sure there had been any panic stations at half time for Liverpool, but, but they were a different side, particularly in the first 15, 20 minutes of that second half, for sure. It was an open start to the game. Like from mm. neutral's point of view, there was end to end action and then got tighter, but it was, it was key, as Craig says, that goal just after half time. Yeah, that was huge. <clears throat> Excuse me. To be honest, the first thing I noticed at the start of the game was I was pleased that Hazard was playing centre forward. Because straight away that told me that they were going to sit tight so that he didn't have to defend. I was quite happy with that. You know, if you're yeah. going to lose the ball, lose it 60, 70 yards for your own goal. So I, I thought that I thought that played into Liverpool's hands. They couldn't break them down initially. Uh, and just before half time, Chelsea definitely got back in the game. Yeah. Uh, but straight after the break, Liverpool. Well, pretty much killed it with the two quick goals. And Salah. What a goal. You know, that's why I said, you know, we've been talking about him not being at his best recently or since Christmas. And I kept saying, well, because, he's, because of the ability he has, because he's done it before, you have to play him. You can't not play him because yeah. he's capable of producing something. And just on time, did it last week. And then what a... I mean, what a strike. The ball didn't move. You... The goalie can't complain that it, that it moved it moved all over the place. The thing was like a bullet right into the top corner. And yes, Chelsea had a couple of little chances after that, but that, that really killed the game. I mean, he does think, I mean, during the, you know, he, he produces magic like that, but you watch him sometimes, and he's, I think epitome of this season for him is like, he'll run at three defenders and he'll box himself in the corner and you think, well, what's he doing here? Standing he's, on he's, it. He's, he's bobbling <laughs> off him and he's trying, he's trying things that are just not going to come off and then he just does something that's brilliant. Yeah. He's done it in several times this season. You think about the cross uh, in Munich he put in, it was an absolute peach. This goal today, there's, there's been others, but I tell you what, once again for long periods, Manny carried a lot of the, the, the shouldered a lot of the responsibility and Roberto Firmino, it's like having an extra midfielder when you haven't got the ball. Yeah. Because he comes back in and he snipes and he works and he tries to win it back. Mm. And I thought actually that's what Liverpool did well for a long time in the game, apart from that little period where Chelsea created those chances, is that Liverpool tried to suffocate Chelsea's possession. Uh, and there was times uh, Chelsea were able to play through, but it wasn't too often. So Liverpool were able to win the ball back in good areas and then get on the front foot. It was one of the big hurdles that had to go over, mm. yes. and they're over it. Well, this is it now. You take a look at the running for Liverpool and compared to Manchester City, there's no doubt. Liverpool have got the easier games remaining. The big question, I suppose, from a Liverpool perspective, Stevie, is whether or not City are going to drop right. any points. That, that, that's the, is that um, the big issue? Because are we yes. saying Liverpool are going to win these next four games? Yeah, I, I have to tell you that I, it's, it's very difficult. Other than... I mean, obviously, Manchester United and Tottenham. Now, it's two games that you wouldn't pick, right? Yes. But we're talking about we're talking about the most talented side in the Premier League. They are. Liverpool are going toe to toe with them, but Man City are the most talented side, man for man. And so it's hard to come up with the reason why that they're not just going to continue playing the way they are. I mean, again, at Crystal Palace today, <clears throat> because Crystal Palace got one back, you go, oh, maybe. But let's be honest, for 88 minutes of the 90 minutes, this was an absolute clack. Well, it was an absolute cakewalk. It, it, was, it was just a shame but, they but didn't still, score more goals. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that it's a more difficult run in, even yeah. though it's in their hands. You know, on any given day, we saw Tottenham beat them in the Champions League, playing again this week. You just have to have an off day. Man United are not playing well. There's not, there's not a shadow of a doubt about that. But they might be able to stifle a draw out of them. Who, who knows? It's certainly a tougher run in. The what? Every time I put that Liverpool graphic up, there's all, one thing I'm always drawn to. And it's not really for f particular football reasons on the field. It's Newcastle. Because of Rafa? Yeah. Because of Rafa. Because of that, he's had such a successful time, or he had a, such a mm -hmm. special time there winning the Champions League. They had success. He's got a great rapport with the fans. I believe he's still, got, his family are still in Liverpool. His property is still in Liverpool. His Newcastle team are safe. They're playing all right. And I, I just think... There's a story there somewhere that, that his relationship with this fan, these fans, is so special. But he's not going to... I don't think... For anybody thinks he's going to say, oh, listen, you just go out and don't... Yeah. Don't, don't try today against Liverpool. I don't think that's going to happen at all. 
and I kind of, I kind of think there could be. A, I don't know why. <laughs> I just think there could be a little twist there right. with the Liverpool going to Newcastle and the whole Rafa Benitez thing. I think it would be ironic if they were to lose the title. If Man City were to lose some games, yep. going to their old boss and losing. And let's bring Jules, Julian and Ron into the conversation. Jules, for you, at the moment, who is the favourite? I think City are still the favourite. For me, they, they have the experience of being them before. Uh, I think they, they Pep has something with, with the league that makes them being like a like a big machine, like, like we saw today at Crystal Palace, where people thought maybe there's a possibility that they would drop point today. And I thought they were so strong and so much in control of the whole game from the start to, to finish. So I still think City are the favourite. And also because it's in their own hands. It's not in Liverpool's hands. It's in City's hands. If they win all their games, mm. and I know it's a, it's a big if, but it's still a possibility, then they will be champions. So I can see Liverpool winning all the remaining games and we just, we've just seen the fixtures. But I can also see City winning all their games, even Spurs and even United away, and win the league again. Still, from Liverpool's perspective, Jules, it was a big statement against Chelsea today. I agree with you, it was. And, and a lot of people this week in England have been talking about the game five years ago, the Gerrard slip, and the fact that almost day to day, like almost to the same day, it was Chelsea at Anfield again, and there was the possibility that they would drop more points, like they did five years ago, etc., etc. And I thought, after the first half they had, which was not their best of the season, they never panicked. They approached that second half with a bit more intensity and, and a bit more movement, I thought, off the ball. And then the two goals in 142 seconds, especially the second one, like the boy said, killed the game. But I thought it was a very mature Liverpool performance when, at halftime, at nil-nil, you know, the pressure and the, the tension could have crept in a little bit, even in the stands. But instead of that, they stayed patient. And like I said, they played far more with more intensity in the second half and, and it paid off. Meanwhile, let's talk about the top four race because obviously that's been blown wide open once again. United with that win yesterday. Chelsea with the defeat now means that just two points separate then. United though with the game in hand. That game in hand obviously is against City next week. But Arsenal, meanwhile, they're taking on Watford tomorrow. That's one of their game in hand over everyone. Do we all agree at the moment that Spurs are fine, yeah? I think, I, yeah. Spurs, Spurs are I good, obviously, so, yes. at home. Most of their games yep. uh, remaining are there, so they, they should be OK. For me, Chelsea are weird, aren't they? In the sense that they brought in Gonzalo Higuain to try and solidify a top four place, but he came on second half today. He doesn't look fit. He just doesn't look at the races at all, does he? It was, it was, it was uh, Liverpool away, though. You know, I think I think Sarri definitely had had defence in mind as as the first the first thing to start with, and that's why he didn't play him, and that's why he had uh, Hazard up front. You know, we've been crambling. Uh, to get Crambly. Hudson Adoy, yes, Crambly. I just made that one up. And uh, Loftus Cheek in the team. And they look a far better side. Now what he has to do for the rest of the the rest of the games yeah. is get himself with Hazard wide, get Iguain up the middle, and they'll win their games. In oh. theory, you, you look at that, and if you're Arsenal, you're happy, aren't yeah. you? Well, but the problem is it's away from home. We know Arsenal are kind of a different entity. So that's situation. why they're not happy. To go yeah. back to go back <laughs> to the yeah. Chelsea thing briefly, is I I and look. Iguain's making, making Giroud look mobile. As simple as that at the moment. But the Hazard experiment through the middle has been done a few times this season and hasn't really worked. Uh, he's been the most effective, as he was recently, from a wide position. Yeah. So I just I kind of think it's... I can see what he's trying to do, but he's been more effective against teams and more of a danger from a wider position. So, I, I did, all right, he had the two chances. They didn't take them. The Arsenal, Arsenal are going to have to man up here away from home. Yeah. I mean, it's quite simple. If they don't man up away from home and figure it out, they're not going to get in the top four. Uh, the performance at Everton was was meek at best. Um, and they're now going to a Watford side that are in the FA Cup final. They're big and strong. They're well organised. They're having a great season under Garcia. And they've got Dini up front who are going to work hard and he's going to harass centre-halves and he's going to be physical. And if they're not able to handle that, the chances of them picking three points up at Vicarage Road are slim. It's as simple as that. Who have you got top four? Tottenham and uh, Chelsea. Oh, yeah? Well, it was Arsenal. But it's a fluid situation. Yeah, I mean, people complete. keep coming yeah. on social yeah, media saying completely. you guys keep changing your mind. Yeah. I didn't think you're not allowed to change your mind right. when teams lose. No. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Although stubborn has been an attribute that you have uh, developed well over the stubborn years. Stubborn person doesn't change. I thought Arsenal, <laughs> I thought Arsenal would eventually get in the top four. But when I saw the performance at Everton last week, and I know they won against Napoli, but that was at home. When I saw yeah. the performance at Everton, it sent to me warning signs. So I'm going to say Chelsea at the moment. Who have you got, Stevie? I've got the same as Craig. Yeah. Chelsea Tottenham, yeah. Because of those two, because of Arsenal. Well, away Arsenal from... away from home, so forget that. Yeah. Uh, and Manchester United, my goodness, home or away, they can't put a performance on. It's one thing to get a result, but you can't keep relying on being lucky. And that's what they're relying on right now. Who have you got, Jules? Obviously, Arsenal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got Tottenham and Arsenal. See, that's... No more. Oh, uh, <laughs> any particular reason? No, no, no. Because well, like, cannot... he loves Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> he, lo he loves Arsenal. They're, they're his team, aren't they? No, no. It's because I, I, I just think that Arsenal at some point will have to play well away from home as well. It can't always be like Everton. I think the Everton defeat and the discussion the players and Emery had after that game was all about we can't, we can't keep playing away from home like we play at home because that doesn't work. We can't have the same attitude that we have at home away from home because that doesn't work. If you go away from home thinking that you're going to play your fancy football without being aggressive, without being physical, then you're going to get beaten. And that's exactly what happened at Everton and also at you know, other away matches earlier in the season. So I think, well, I hope that they're finally aware that for the remaining games away this season, which is Watford away, Wolves away, Leicester away and Burnley away, they're not going to approach those games in the same way that they approached the Everton game, which was clearly not good enough at all. And I think the return of Lucas Torreira, for example, even Granit Xhaka to a certain extent, uh, will, will bring a bit more steel in that midfield because they were too lightweight against Everton, for example. Arsenal TV's uh, Julian Laurent there giving mm -hmm. us... Uh, There's a big straw somewhere in that <laughs> room. A big, a big straw in that room back there in London that Jules is grasping at. Well, everyone agrees that tomorrow a big litmus test then for Arsenal and those top four credentials. Away against Watford, Unai Emery's side, though, do go into that game as favourites. And be sure to join us on the next edition of the show. We'll, of course, be looking back... As well. <laughs> That's done. it. We're done. Particularly those Mexican ones. Yeah, you did like all those Pachuca goals. Goals. Who wants to see goals? I've ever seen a Mexican league before. <laughs> you have to see the good. Thank you very much to Craig and, and Stevie. Way, right? uh, be sure to stay <laughs> tuned uh, to Extra Time. Jules is back with us as well. Welcome into Extra Time. The inevitable Tiger Woods question comes alongside Lionel Messi. Is Prime Messi better at football than Prime Tiger was at golf? Now, now we're comparing, so we've, we've gone off from Messi Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, right. no. so, How many hat tricks has Messi got? 59. How many holes in one has Tiger got? 17. There you go, Messi won. There you go. Right. Perfect. Done. They're incomparable. <laughs> <laughs> Apples and oranges. Jules, would you like to add anything to this? Not really, not really. We can't compare them, they're two genius. And good it's good to... Uh, what, where we're really lucky is that we've been able to see them both in their own sport oh, being simply amazing. You're not a golfer, are you, Jules? He'd make a great job. Yeah, drama. I am a bit. Oh, yeah. Before I had children. And yeah, before I had the kids, yeah. Since the kids, it's, it's a bit more difficult. But I tried to, to play now and again. Now you're, you're saying you're under the thumb. I play really badly. But what's your handicap? No. Or what was it then? Yes, and then the <laughs> I even didn't get to get a handicap, Stevie. I, I'm, oh, no, no. You need to get I don't play enough, yeah. unfortunately. If Craig's got an app, give him a call. He'll sort it out for you. He's, He's going to do mine one of these days. OK. Uh, Salah or Sterling? Jules? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I think you asked me that question maybe six months ago, and I think at that time I might have stayed Sterling. And right now, I would say, I would say Mosala. And you know what? I think for me, the celebration after his goal against Southampton was so telling because it's, it was such an, an unlike Mosala celebration to take the shirt off. It was a Cristiano Ronaldo celebration, but Mosala never usually celebrates like Cristiano Ronaldo. But you could feel all the frustration of those eight games in a row without a goal. You could feel how important that goal was for him and obviously for the team, but, but also the way he expressed it. I thought was was so important, and you could you, you knew after that that he was going to go on a run and scoring goals again regularly like he used to before that that goal drought. So just for that, we go for Salah. So right you now. have Salah over Sterling because he took his shirt off. 
No! <laughs> no, the way, I thought the way he celebrated was very telling on, you know, why I was going to come and now you could expect him to score regularly and I just think Jules, that, Jules, you know, don't he formed then and Jules, I will go for him. Jules, don't talk to him. He knows exactly what you said. He's just Stephen. being done. Stephen, after today, after that goal, Salah. They haven't got two. Right? Yeah. He should have got more. Right. Scoffed one. Yeah. Actually, one of the ones that he did score, he scoffed it as well. Right. So we got one as well. He's gone for the man that he's been <laughs> hammering. The yeah, last six exactly. Weeks. But you've just asked me, you've just asked me after he scored arguably the goal of the season. Okay. Who would it take now? Right. So a goal with Salah. Okay. Oh. Craig? Okay. Said so Sterling the last time and I'll stick to that. Julian, how many players did you interview post-game this week and how many languages and who was the best, who was the worst? Wow. <laughs> I want to know a lot about your life. Uh, oh, I, I, yeah, it was a busy week. I did um, Lucas Moura, Mus Musa Sissoko and Hugo Lloris after the Spurs win, and Riyad Mahrez, but all in French. Oh. Uh, Riyad Mahrez uh, was not very, as you could expect. Nice. Um, well, it was nice, but I just didn't want to talk, didn't want to be there, to be fair. Uh, Ciso Colioris and Lucas were lovely, as always, especially Hugo Lloris after the penalty save. He loves Hugo Lloris. Uh, that was Tuesday. <laughs> oh On Wednesday, I interviewed... Um, I interviewed Romero Lukaku and Paul Pogba, both in French. Uh, Pogba refused to talk about Real Madrid, uh, but I thought it was, was quite good in his interview. Lukaku... Um, had a big tackle on PSG saying that Barcelona are not PSG and no offence to PSG but the way they crumbled against United, Barcelona are not going to do but they're still in for the qualification. And then on Thursday at Arsenal, wow. I didn't interview anyone. Wow, oh, thank no, goodness Young, for that. Young, but that was in French as well. Tell me some Hamjols. Sorry, Jules. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was boring. Tell me some Hamjols because that's always intrigues me. Uh, the interview with Riyad Mahrez, was that a, a set-up interview that he knew was happening? And he didn't want to be there. So he was, yeah, he was part of the Raholders uh, interview. But yeah. I mean, it's it's one of the. I mean, I saw him. No, I saw him in a mix zone. To be fair to him, I saw him in a mix zone, and I think City put him forward for the club and media as well. And it's just one of those when you lose a game like that and you haven't played well. I'm not sure. Oh, it's after the game, yeah. You really want to be there. Yeah, yeah Pep oh, Guardiola, right. straight after the game, Guardiola came as well and was really not happy and didn't want to be there either. And I, can, I you know, I guess I can understand that. I thought, no, sorry, I got that wrong. I thought it was like a set down interview. Ah, oh, you were hoping he was just Mardi just in general. Yeah, because I never understand if people, yeah, if you don't want to be there, if it's yeah. just a sit down, then don't do it. You know what I mean? But if it's after a game, that's understandable. Stephen, if Liverpool get 95 points, but fail to win the league or the Champions League, would the season be considered a failure? No. No, listen, they've, at the end of the day, they've taken a step closer to Manchester City. So that can't be seen as failure. Mm. I mean, somewhere down the line, you have to overtake them. But for right now, if, if they get that close to City, uh, then it won't be a failure. Are Jules, we are we disappointing? Oh, sorry. Sorry. They're not a failure. There will be, I'm finished. There, I mean, <laughs> there will be, uh, there will be uh, some uh, muppets out there that will come out. And, oh, there will be. We'll be phoning into the usual <laughs> phone engine. Right, say. this isn't a phone in show, by the way. Oh, no, we can get, we can do that. <laughs> no. I mean, in the UK, in particular, Klopp has to go. Right. Oh, surely no one will Guaranteed. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, not a lot, but there's always a few. But as Stevie said, as long as your club's progressing, yep. and they are, then you move on and you learn and you try and strengthen. And Liverpool, there's no doubt, are progressing in the right direction. Jules, how does it feel to be watching Manchester United play Barcelona in the Champions League instead of PSG? Oh, oh. I felt like crying. Tell you what, they were so bad as well. I felt like crying. He's Julian. I know. <laughs> Why does he hate Julian? Why did he bring this up for poor Jules? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Oh. 
Oh. It was that bad. And I had to come on stage for French radio. And I couldn't really say what I was thinking. Oh. But you I was like, for really? French radio as well? Really? Gee, heavens, you must have some yeah. hopes. By the way, no one he can <laughs> no one he can get out in the golf course. <laughs> no one he can't play. It's wow. one he can. <laughs> Those invoices. <laughs> Uh, final question, which is from our producer, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and he's made one of our AP send it in. How much of a disaster is it for Ajax if De Jong can't play against Juventus, Julian? It's a huge disaster, and I'm sure that comes from our producer. Yeah. Um, it was interesting, I thought, to hear uh, Max Allegri after the first leg saying that De Jong is, is basically Ajax, that, that everything that Ajax do comes from him and that they try to keep him quiet by putting Benton Co on him and that didn't work at all. And obviously if he was to miss the second leg, it would be a huge blow. And I think the whole, not just the dynamic for Ajax, but the whole way, they, the whole setup, the whole way they're playing would be so much disturbed that they would lose, I don't know, 25% chances of going through if he's just not, if he's just not I there. I mean, if De Jong doesn't, bad. if De Jong can't play, how is our producer going to cope? I, don't know. I mean, when's the game, the Ajax game? Tuesday. So he's got, Tuesday. what, 48 hours? Yeah. I mean, he's going to need and probably need another operation <laughs> to get over there. So there's going to be doctor's appointments <laughs> and tablets and medicine. <laughs> Won't be able to do the show. No. It'll be too much. It'll be too much for him. It'll be it. <laughs> he's telling you now. Uh, Guaranteed. He'll like, be off tomorrow now. Now, Jules, who are you interviewing next week and in what languages and on what day? How many <laughs> languages did Jules speak? I don't know. Should I... we ask him? Jules, how many languages do you speak? I speak uh, French, English, and Spanish. Oh, is that all? Is there any word? <laughs> is there any yeah, word I mean, in, yeah. in any of those languages? Is there a word crambling? Crambling. crambling. Yeah, Stevie brought that into the show. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I threw that. I in, need yeah. to make them up in French and in uh, Spanish as well. Perfect. Right. That's it. That's enough of this. Yeah. That's just... Right. Um, Arsenal Watford tomorrow, isn't it? Arsenal looking, of course, to get into the top four. Plus, we're looking ahead uh, to those second leg Champions League ties. <clears throat>